Welcome to the Hot Mama Revival. Today I'm interviewing the lovely Catherine Nudat, who is a fitness expert. She's a personal trainer and she's the CEO and founder of CR Wellness Corporation, where she actually goes in and helps corporations keep their employees fit and healthy, but she also works one-on-one -on -one with people. She has lots of moms for clients, and I've actually known Catherine for I believe like 13 or 14 years now. We actually met years ago in Newport Beach. When I joined 24 Hour Fitness, Catherine was my trainer. I got like a few free training sessions and then I kept doing it because Catherine kicked my ass. I mean, she is just so knowledgeable. She's so good at what she does. And she's still rocking, you know, the rich and famous bodies there in Orange County. So welcome, Catherine. Thank you, Erin. It's so great to be on your show and work with you and your moms and your crowd. And yes, I did kick your booty 12 plus years ago, and I am thankful that you think of me when it comes down to fitness. Oh, I definitely do. And, you know, Catherine, not only does she have the experience of doing this with so many people, but she also has the academic background. She has a degree in exercise science and a master's degree in exercise science and physiology. So she is no doubt one of the top experts in the West, probably in the country, and I'm so glad that I'm working with her. Uh, so today I just wanted to ask some of the questions that you know people have been asking me and I give the answers, I do research, but I think that hearing the answers from you is a really, really powerful thing because you actually have the academic background and the ex experience. So the number one question, Catherine, that I get asked is how can I get my core toned? Because so many moms after giving birth, you know, your stomach stretches way out here and they just have a hard time. You know, they might even lose the weight everywhere else, but the stomach is just so hard to lose. So how can we get our stomachs flat again? Okay, that's a great question. Now, to preface on how to get your stomachs back in shape, we do want to remind everybody that there's no such thing as spot reduction, okay? So it's important to know that wherever you're losing weight first after having a baby um, or just in general getting in shape, you might get annoyed that your legs are getting thinner or your arms or your face is getting thinner, but your abs are still holding, you know, the fat mass, and then it's the last thing to go. So you could do as many sit-ups or as you want, but you're not going to, you know, see the results there necessarily at first. You will once you, you know, lose the fat in the other places. So I just want to be honest about that. And then the best exercises. You know, I don't believe in crunches and yanking on the neck. There's so many ways to work your abs. Uh, for example, doing the plank. I always say, you know, Google plank online and you'll find all different ways to do the plank, you know, with both hands or on your side. Um, great safe exercises that work the entire abdominal muscle to get it strong. Now, when you're losing the fat tissue around those strong muscles you're building, that's your diet and that's cardio. So what percentage would you say of weight loss is actually the exercise and what percentage is the diet? Because for me, I've always thought I could control my weight and my size with just exercising, but as I get older, it doesn't seem to be quite as effective. <laughs> so can, can you yeah. tell us what, what's the actual percentage so we can know what we actually need to focus on? Truly, it's about an 80-20. 80% of what you eat gets you to your results. 20% is exercise. So you can exercise till you're blue in the face, but until you clean up that diet and, you know, watch the foods that you're eating, uh, you, you won't see results nearly as fast. So what would you say are some easy tips for the busy mom who's just wanting to lose weight but doesn't necessarily want to make separate meals for her family and for herself? What are some easy things that she can do to improve to clean up her diet? Like, what does a clean diet mean to you? A clean diet to me uh, means, and this is what I coach on, anything that grows out of the ground, falls off a tree, swims in fresh water, um, or is an animal source that's hormone-free or not caged, uh, those clean, lean foods. Now, that's, you know, shopping the supermarket and staying out of the processed area. So the right. cleaner you eat, meaning growing out of the ground, falling off a tree, you literally have to ask yourself, did that Trisket fall off a tree? You know, and it didn't. And so it's not the best choice in carbohydrate. 
um, mm. nutrition wise and getting you to your results. So what are the, the best carbohydrates? Lean. What are the best carbohydrates? Because I think there's the a lot of confusion. Yeah, that's a great question. Best carbohydrates are fruits, vegetables, um, sweet potatoes, real true whole grain rice. Now you need to look at the package and this is how you do it. You have to look at the package and at least has to have five grams or more fiber per serving. So huh. there's a lot of commercial products out there that will even say brown rice. But if you look at the package, it has one or two grams of fiber, and they've actually stripped the nutrients of it. So you're getting fooled. Yeah. I've so heard that with whole wheat bread, it, too. That whole wheat bread, yeah. a lot of it, Any refined flour. Food. Yeah, exactly. Uh, whole wheat bread, even with crackers, if you're going to go more processed, which we all you know, eat some processed, that uh, you want to have at least five grams of fiber per serving. Well, so one of the things that a lot of people ask me about is my opinion about the paleo diet and the Atkins diet. Those seem to be two that people really jump to. And some people have a lot of success with the Atkins diet, but personally, I have a lot of trouble with it because I feel like, of course, you lose a lot of weight when you cut out all carbohydrates. Uh, but then it seems like people, when they go off of it, they just gain the weight back. And then also the paleo diet seems really restrictive with no, I mean, it just, you have to stick to such a, um, you know, small amount of things that you can eat because you're not supposed to eat any refined flour or any processed food. What are your thoughts on those two diets? Um, on those two diets, particularly the Atkins diet, <clears throat> where they take out complete carbohydrates, mm -hmm. zero carbohydrates. We want to remember that our body and our brain functions off of glucose, and glucose is carbohydrates. So we absolutely 100% want carbohydrates in our system because when we don't have carbohydrates in our system, we're tired, we're cranky, we're irritable, and when people think that they're losing weight, the first thing actually when your body runs out of glucose, the first thing your body will break down to make glucose to survive is actually your muscle tissue. Ooh. So when people are losing dramatic amounts of weight, it's not fat tissue, it's initially muscle tissue and water. So you're losing your metabolism. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people on the Atkins, it's hard to keep up because your, your body functions off of glucose in your brain. Um, and then when they start eating like they used to, they don't have the muscle tissue, which is your metabolism to maintain burning that many calories that they normally would throughout the day. So sometimes they tend to gain even more weight back. Yeah, so that's what my dad did. You know, exactly. So, you know, it's still the same fruits, vegetables, and grains. People just tend to overeat on carbohydrates. We have to remember, you have to earn your carbohydrates, okay? So if you're very complacent, inactive, you know, you, you need some carbohydrates during the day, but not that much. Um, if you're the more active you are, the more carbohydrates you need. But you still want to eat the fruits, the vegetables, the whole grains, the sweet potatoes, the things that actually offer nutritional value. And then, as far as the uh, the paleo, the paleo. Diet, which is so popular, you know what I like about the paleo diet is that they do encourage eating lean and clean, meaning you know, eating fresh fish, you know, meat if you want, vegetables, they encourage eating berries, <clears throat> and uh, like sweet potatoes. I think they underestimate the importance of carbohydrates, however. Um, and, you know, they'll say don't even eat a high fiber rice that's, or a high fiber oatmeal that's never been processed at all. Um, I completely disagree with that. If you talk to any true, real athlete, they are ingesting some amount of carbohydrates um, on the grain form, um, but to just enough that they need to stay lean and right. you know, and not and not gain extra fat tissue. Because if you overeat on carbohydrates, you increase your insulin level, which is your fat storing hormone. Okay. So that's what you want to prevent. You want to eat just enough. And so I always say. Use the palm, fist, thumb method. Huh. So everybody has a different shape and size palm. Like you have a different size one than your husband. So you want your portion for your meals, not your snacks, your meals for your protein to be the size and thickness of the palm in your hand. Okay. And then your carbohydrates, the size of your fist. And then you want to have a little fat. So about the size of your thumb, a couple slices of avocado, or if you're cooking with olive oil or canola oil or coconut oil, you just need that amount per meal, not for the day, per meal. Huh. 
That's Does brilliant. That, make sense? that yeah, makes so much reason, sense. Well, the reason is, is because if you eat carbohydrates alone, you spike your, in, you know, your insulin and your blood sugar level. Okay. Okay. If you eat protein alone, your blood sugars lay low. But when you match them up and include fat, fat with it, they stay nice and balanced, and you're in a state of what they call lipolysis. So lipolysis is you're is in a fat burning mode. So if Which you want, want to continuously be in a fat burning mode, meaning you're using your fat tissue for your energy, whether we're sitting here having a conversation or you're out and about. If you've balanced your meals, you're using fat as your energy source. And, I've, you know, most people want to do that. Well, I actually have a question about alcohol because, you know, in my book, I recommend wine. Apparently, too many times for my mom. She actually make, made fun of me about it. Um, but I, I really think that a glass of wine now and then is so healthy and uh, it's so important for moms. What do you think about alcohol and what, like, what's too much and too frequent? Like, can we drink every day? Can we drink just once a week? What, what do you think? Well, I live the European lifestyle. And I 100% am totally down with people having glasses of wine um, or a cocktail or whatnot. And actually, per the American guidelines, you're allowed one cocktail a day. Um, you know, and it's not saving up to have seven on a Sunday, uh, <laughs> which is really easy. But having a glass or two of wine on a daily basis, the Europeans are a lot healthier than us because they move more, they act more, they're less stressed out. They have a glass of wine at lunch and a glass of wine at dinner. They don't drink to get drunk, they just drink right. as part of their culture. And so I think if Americans change the way we're thinking, like don't drink to get drunk, drinking is, you know what I mean, part of the culture, just part of sanity in a glass, that's what I say, it's sanity in a glass, then you're going to be just fine. But you do have to count it towards, you know, your calories for the day. You need to exercise. I mean, you can't have, you, you, everything's in moderation. Right. I right? totally agree everything, with you. Everything's in moderation. But I, I myself, I believe in drinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're good friends. Well, so here's a question. I, you know, my husband and I, Steve, you know, Steve, we went to Las Vegas for a long weekend and it was kind of a gluttonous weekend. I have to say a little out of control, lots of drinking, a lot more than normal, lots of eating, amazing meals. What do you recommend to kind of, of course, you could just be saddled with guilt and say, oh, forget it. You know, I've gone off the wagon. What or or for me, I usually kind of try to just keep it clean for a little while till I feel norm, like back balanced again. Like, how could you recommend sort of detoxing from a crazy weekend in Vegas? Well, usually, if you've really had a crazy weekend in Vegas, you don't feel like drinking when you get home. You're like, oh, so true, I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So ho hopefully, you put yourself into an enough of an oblivion to say, you know, I only want water and I want to feel healthy. So just take a couple days off of drinking, you know, three days, drink tons of water, eat whole foods, fruits, vegetables, clean, you know, meats or fish, and you'll feel great within a couple days. Yeah, okay. That's kind of what I thought. Well, one of the questions that was written in was, how do you fight gravity in your rear end? Because a lot of women, as they get older, and, you know, just I think as we sit at our jobs a lot, our booties start to drop and get flat. And uh, to me, like a good booty is kind of a nice lifted, raised, cute little butt. And, you know, obviously other women are having the same concern. What do you recommend? What are the best things we can do to keep a nice lifted booty? You want to keep a lifted booty. Absolutely. You want that round, tight booty. And it is possible to keep, okay? But you have to work at it. So there's great exercises you could do at home. Uh, step ups using your own stairs. I always recommend if you have stairs in your house to do three sets of 20 step ups on each leg. Anything with an inc in with an incline. So even if you okay. have a treadmill and you're walking, put it on an incline. Um, squats. If you have if you're able to do that with knees, use a chair in your house. Down and up. Three sets of 20. If you once that's easy, add dumbbells with your hands. So lunges as well, stationary lunges or walking lunges. So between lunges, squats, step ups, you know, and walking or running at an incline or running stairs, you're gonna consistently, yes. not just you know, <laughs> once a month. 
consistently, you're going to, you're going to build that booty. It's your, it's muscle tissue. So you can build it and rock it. Well, here's another question kind of similar. A lot of women that I've coached are worried that, you know, if they lift weights, if they do too much with weight, that they're going to get bulky. What do you say about that? Because I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions. Like how do you get the nice lean muscle and can women really get that bulky, you know, too big of muscle by lifting weights? Yes. A lot of women are in fear of uh, lifting any type of weights because they're afraid they're going to end up looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Um, the truth is it depends on your muscle tissue type. You have two types of muscle tissue. One is type one and one is type two. And how you know if you're type one or type two, um, is that ask yourself, are you um, a long distance runner or are you a short, fast sprinter? Um, and if you're a long distance runner, meaning you can run miles on end, and feel good, you can almost guarantee your type 1 muscle tissue, that's endurance muscle tissue. Those type of people can lift weights and even heavier weights put on muscle tissue but really don't have the ability to get big and bulky. If you're a sprinter, um, anything powerful that you do, any kind of athletic sports that you're powerful, that's more of a type 2 muscle tissue. They have the tendency to put on muscle tissue at a much faster rate. So if they want to be toned, they want to do a lighter weight but higher repetitions. Okay. Like 15 or 20 repetitions versus, you know, eight repetitions of a mm -hmm. weight that they're maxing out and feeling the burn. Does that make so sense? It's really, it does. So it's really individual. Well, so you know my body type, Catherine. What would you say I am? You're definitely type 1 muscle tissue. I know you like to do half marathons, and I've worked you out too, and I've given you very heavy weights, and you get lean, and you put on muscle, but not on, not in the, the same um, rapid speed, I should say, that if I was working with somebody with a type 2 muscle tissue. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And I, I think there is a lot of misconceptions out there. So and I, your, I actually, your, your husband's a type 1 muscle tissue, too. Yes. No doubt about that. He, <laughs> he complains about that, actually, because I think guys want the opposite. Instead of the nice, long, yeah. lean muscles, they want the nice, big, bulky muscles. Um, well, so what recommend or what exercises do you recommend, though, for that nice, long, lean muscle? Because I think that's a look that women really appreciate, like the nice, you know, you're toned and you're fit, but you're not like, you know, really bulky muscles. Yeah, that's a great question. If you just want to be toned and mm -hmm. fit and be strong, mm -hmm. you always gain strength first. The first five weeks of training in any kind of a resistance training, you're gaining strength first. Then you can start putting on some muscle mass. Um, any type of resistance training is good, whether it's actually using free weights, um, if you're doing a Pilates, if, even if you're doing power yoga, Anything that's using your own body weight, uh, you will get stronger and put on some muscle mass if you want. Now, if you were running to put on a lot of muscle mass, you would want to use heavier and heavier weights. Or if you're okay. on a Pilates machine, you make the you know attachments more difficult and more difficult or more challenging. Well, so what do you think about something like CrossFit? Because I know that's a huge trend right now. A lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are loving it, but I've also heard some people are getting injured. What do you think about it? I personally am going through a CrossFit phase myself. I go through phases because you never want to do the same thing over and over because when you hit a plateau, you got to change it up. So I changed mine up um, about a year ago, and I started doing CrossFit. And the reason why, too, I did it is because um, I get bored lifting weights on my own, and so it's nice to be with a group of people, usually the accountability, having partners and friends. Um, I, I love it. I think it's great for resistance training, and they do some interval training, uh, meaning higher heart rate activity. So if you want to build some strength and put on some muscle, CrossFit is great. Um, the important thing, though, people are getting injured, and the reason is is because when you have a class full of people, it's hard for coaches to watch every individual. Right. So you want to find a studio that doesn't have more than maybe 10 people in a class at once and make sure your instructor is extremely qualified, meaning an exercise science background, specialty in biomechanics. It's very easy for a fitness trainer to go get a three-day certification and call themselves a trainer and then people get injured. 
biomechanics, especially in CrossFit, because there's a lot of power and different movements involved, are very important. So you need to interview your coach or the coaches and find out who has the skills and expertise and kind of just get a feel. Is your coach correcting you on where your knee is if you're lunging or, you know, where your positioning is if you're doing, you know, a back row? Um, all of those things matter. So kind of just scope that out. All right. Well, we're actually starting to get some questions here. And one of the questions is, what should I do if I only have 20 minutes available to work out? Like, what is the best use of my time? You know, a lot of moms were, you know, schedules are crazy. So a lot of people I honestly think say, oh my gosh, 20 minutes, not enough time to do anything influential. So I'll just skip it. What do you think, Catherine? I know you've got a solution. Um, 20 minutes can be an extremely get great time to work out, um, especially if you only have 20 minutes, maybe even three times a week. So you got to get cardio in and you got to get your weightlifting in. So I would recommend what we call circuit training. It's where you have about, you know, four to six different exercises, um, including weight bearing exercise. And you go from station to station through those four to six exercises mm-hmm. about three to four times through. And that should take you about 20 minutes. Okay. I actually sent you a complimentary in-home workout that is for, I call it the awesome. no ex- CR No Excuse Workout. So uh, <laughs> women can start there, uh, go through the training, you know, and work up to getting through it four times. When it becomes easier, we can make up a new workout for you. Um, awesome. But then it gets your cardio in plus your weight-bearing exercise. Now, if you have extra time um, on another day for 20 minutes, believe it or not, a very fast-paced walk or getting on an elliptical, anything that gets your heart rate up, we talk about heart rate. What's, where does your heart rate have to be? I, a lot of people ask me, well, I walk, and I'm like, well, how fast do you walk? Right. And so whatever your cardio, when you're doing cardio, if your goal is to lose fat tissue, okay, uh, you want on a scale of 1 to 10 to be at a 7. Okay. And what I mean by that is, is that, like, one, right now we're sitting here, we're doing nothing, um, we're easily having a conversation, and 10 would be where we're, you know, in a spin class and we're working so hard that we can barely talk or not talk at all. Whether you're at a 1 or a 10, you're still using fat, okay, as your energy source, but if you're at a seven, meaning you're working hard, but you know, able to have a conversation, but it's not the easiest thing, you're burning the optimal amount of fat during that time. So if you want to be, you know, efficient with your time, make sure in, in losing fat, make sure within that time zone, you're at about a seven. Okay. Well, so is there a certain amount of time that we need to do cardio? Like I've heard something like you don't start burning a lot of fat until you've been running or you've been walking or whatever for at least 30 minutes. Is that true? Is there anything to that? It's not true. Not at all. Actually, huh. once you're in your heart rate zone, you're fine. So all right. I, mean, I do recommend work warming up. You never just want to start out and run. So run a little slow or walk a little slower and then pick it up. But you shouldn't need more than five minutes to warm up and get in your optimal heart rate zone. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Well, another question that I've had here, which is a very good one, is how can what exercises can I do to lift and strengthen my post-nursing breasts to make them look perkier? Okay. I love it that I am just so honest because this is just what people need. I'm like the honest trainer out there and you're going to get the real deal. Okay. There's a difference between pectoral muscles or we call them, you know, your chest muscles, but what they're really called, you know, correctly is your pectoral muscles. And then the things that are on top of your pectoral muscles are called breasts. Okay. (laughs) So your breasts are completely fat tissue. Okay, so you can strengthen your pectoral muscles or your chest muscles by doing push-ups or, you know, bench press chest exercises. However, those exercises are not going to affect the fat tissue. You cannot tone fat tissue. So if your Mm -hmm. boobs are falling and then you breastfeed, sweetheart, they are going to keep going south. You can do two things, wear a push-up bra or get a breast augmentation. That's it. So if you have a trainer that's like, oh, I can lift your boobs and we'll do push-ups and, you know, all these chest exercises, they either, one, are completely lying to your face or two, have no idea what they're talking about. (laughs) That would actually be a good way to wean out a trainer. (laughs) Can you help me lift my boobs? Yeah. 
And well, you honestly ask that. And if they say yes, like move on to the next trainer. <laughs> I feel like I've even read about that in magazines though. Like, you know, lift your chest with this or lift your breasts with this workout. And so that is actually really good to know. And it's kind of sad news for mamas that have well, breasts it, that are going in the wrong sad. direction. You but you have to remember most things that you, you know, read are all marketing material. So you know, you have all these supplements on the market that say there's fat loss in it or, you know, it's going to speed up your metabolism. You know, marketing in America, there's no legal guidelines to it. They can say whatever they want, like Special K claims they have like the best weight loss program, but it's like the most malnutritious cereal on the face of this earth, right? So there's no fiber in it that's not whole grain. You're going to be starving. So be careful of marketing. I mean, I love reading those magazines. And, and just remember, when you're looking at those ladies on the magazines, they are airbrushed. So They are airbrushed. There's no doubt about it. I've seen a couple of the Dove campaigns where, um, you know, Dove, the, the soap brand, and they've showed, like, real women, like, before airbrushing and after. And, you know, you've seen those things going around Facebook. And I just think that women are held to a standard that, pretty much nobody can meet, not even models. Like if you think about supermodels being airbrushed that way, you know, 105 pounds, and then, you know, how does the average woman expect to feel like she can ever compare? You know, I have to say, you know, Steve and I, um, there's this new um, author, her name is Sarah Deanna. She is a lovely, lovely woman, and she is a high fashion supermodel. And when you look at her pictures in Vogue and um, Elle magazine, all these like serious high fashion, she looks stunning. But meeting her in person, like she makes fun of herself. She's like, I look like an alien, don't I? <laughs> and <laughs> just seeing what that kind of skinny looks like in real life, it's, it's really skinny, like really skinny. So, you know, a lot of women, your body does change after having a baby, and some of that's okay, and also some of it's aging. I think a lot of the stuff that we blame you know, childbirth on, which it doesn't help, but our breasts starting to sag, our butt starting to sag, a lot of those things, don't you think, Catherine, are just getting older a little bit? Absolutely, and less active. Um, they say yeah. after the age of 30, people start to uh, lose one pound of muscle tissue a year on average. Well, the reason why that's happening is because it's only happening in America, too, because it's you're having less and less activity. Yeah. So if you want to keep your muscle tissue, you can. Just like if you have bone density issues and people have osteopenia or osteoporosis, it's reversible, okay, mm -hmm. by weight-bearing exercise. My oldest client was 93 years old, and her bio scans for her bone density were going up every year. Your body's an amazing machine. You can keep your muscle, improve your muscle, improve your bone density. I mean, you can become healthier. It's the excuses of I'm getting older, you know, that's why I'm getting fat. I mean, things happen like hormonal changes and you have to, you know, work with your doctor on those type of things. But as far as muscle tissue and bone density, I mean, when a woman comes in and is like, you know, I've lost so much muscle or I'm more out of shape, I'm like, well, we can reverse that. And that's good news. That is great news. And actually, another question that I see down here is that a woman is writing in to see if, you know, she is wondering if it's worth exercising all through her pregnancy because after you give birth, you can't exercise for six weeks just to, so you can heal. So is it worth exercising your entire pregnancy and trying to stay in shape? It's like a losing battle because you're getting bigger and chubbier no matter what you do pretty much. But then, you know, okay. I did exercise and I felt like it was worth it just because it made me feel better while I was pregnant. But it is disappointing because, you know, you, you feel like you're in decent shape and then you go six weeks without exercising. What do you think about that, Catherine? Is it worth exercising your whole pregnancy when you have to take a six week break after giving birth? Absolutely. Um, and the reason you want to continue to exercise throughout your entire pregnancy, if you have no medical conditions and your doctor has approved it, is you can maintain your muscle mass. So if you just stop and you say, oh, I, I'm pregnant, I'm not going to work out, you're going to atrophy. Your muscle is going to atrophy. So then, therefore, the six weeks that you can't work out after pregnancy, your metabolism is not at its optimal peak. It's going to be harder to take off the weight. So if you continue to exercise, you know, with your doctor's permission, the next six weeks, your metabolism is going to be at a higher 
at a higher point and you're going to start losing the weight faster. So absolutely, 100%, you want to continue to exercise as long as you can while you're pregnant. Okay, well that makes me feel good. Well, so one other question that I'm seeing here is what's the number one way to increase your metabolism rate? Building muscle tissue. Really? Okay. Well, because you know, muscle, tissue, muscle tissue is your metabolism. If you don't have muscle tissue, I mean, I see skinny fat people all the time. They're like, oh my gosh, they're so skinny and they look cute in clothes, but they're like, you know, full of cellulite or whatever. They don't have necessarily, you know, a high metabolism. So if you want to improve your metabolism so you can burn more calories, you want to make sure you have a good amount of muscle tissue on your body. And that does not mean being big and bulky. It just means being toned and fit. Okay. Well, we're starting to run out of time here. Um, I just wanted to know one other quick question. Let's say a woman has an event coming up in just like three to four to five weeks. She's, you know, not wanting to lose a ton of weight necessarily. She just wants to tone up a little bit so she feels more confident in a swimsuit or, you know, in the bedroom with her husband. What in, you know, two to six weeks, what can you really recommend doing to tone up as quickly as possible to feel sexy? I would definitely recommend if you're on that quick of a path of a five to six week and, you know, maybe you want to drop eight pounds and just, you know, feel great. Um, definitely getting in four to five days of cardio for a good 40 minutes, okay, in that heart rate zone of a seven. And at least three other days or on the same days you're doing cardio, it's fine. You're doing weight-bearing exercises. So, you know, three, at least three or four sets going through your circuit training or three or four sets of that exercise and getting to about 15 repetitions. 15 repetitions will get strong, lean, um, not put on a ton of muscle mass. Um, but you want, when you're at that 15th repetition, to be burning. So if you're using a two pound weight and you're doing 15 repetitions and you're like, I could do 15 more, that's <laughs> not gonna get you to your goal. So you wanna use a weight that you're burning at that 15th repetition. So okay. cardio and resistance training. Okay. Just, you have to just do a little bit more time. It's going to take more time. You have to spend more time doing more cardio, more time doing a little bit more resistance training on that short time frame. You know, it, you know, it's not like, okay, if you have 20 minutes, three days a week, it's going to take you a little bit longer to get to your goal. But you can get to your goal. But just right. remember, 80% of it's food. So clean, eat clean and lean. Well, that, that's what the uh, Love Your Body After Baby is all about, uh, a sustainable way of living that's balanced and in, you, you can eat anything, but you focus most of your time on eating a really healthy diet. A lot of the, you know, you're saying the European way, a lot of the Mediterranean diet is something that I really love, like the um, omega-3 fatty acids and all of the olive oils and um, feta cheese and lots of greens and stuff like that. It just, and it tastes so good. I don't ever believe in eating stuff that tastes like crap. <laughs> I agree and when you start eating fresh foods you you crave them and then when you, you do. taste processed foods you're like Whoa, it doesn't even taste good so no, it's I mean, so true and you know you, you go to Europe we're talking about European diets you go and you see that they're having a chocolate croissant but the chocolate croissant's like not even the size of my fist you come to America and you get a chocolate croissant so it's like two fist size right right so everything in moderation, even if you want a little bit of a chocolate croissant, it's fine. Just have a couple of bites, but your next meal is lean and clean, balanced with protein, carbohydrates, and a little bit of fat, and you're going to be great. Well, these are, I mean, I love this hand, fist, thumb thing because I tell you, I've never heard that. And I, you know, I'm big into the fitness stuff. I'm always reading, and that is the easiest guideline. I'm always trying to think like when I'm making pasta, can I have like a half a cup or a cup? But now that I can just look at my fists and think, okay, this is about it. And it's, yeah. it's like the perfect solution for every person. You know, it's like, this is what you should eat for your body size. And you think about the, that even for children, you know, like sometimes I expect exactly. my little guy to eat a lot and you know, his little fist is what, like, you know, <laughs> this big. Exactly. Exactly. And you can travel around the world, go to restaurants and stick yeah. to the palm fist thumb method and you'll be all right. I think you should write a book about that, Catherine. I'll co-author it with you. <laughs> okay, that sounds fantastic. Well, okay, so I don't want to let everybody go today without giving them an opportunity to 
understand how they might be able to work with you. And of course, like you mentioned, everybody uh, gets to have access to a free workout from Catherine, which is really exciting. I can't wait to print it out myself. But how else can they work with you and how can they find you and your website and social media and all, all the goodies? Thank you so much. You can find more information on my company and follow us. Um, our website is www.crwellnesscorp.com. So www.crwellnesscorp.com. And on our website, you can click and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. We're getting a ton of free, healthy, motivational and, you know, um, information all the time. And it's just a great way to just get a little boost every day. Um, and if you also, we do a complimentary monthly health newsletter. So if you email us at info at crrwellnesscorp.com, you can sign up for a free health newsletter that I write every month. Well, it that newsletter is tips and it gives healthy recipes and it, it's good. It's, it's really it's good. good. And I have to say, I've printed off the recipes many times, and I wanted to ask you if I could put them in my class because um, the recipes are fantastic. That's one of my favorite things. And then it's always uh, things that you can read in just you know three or four minutes, but you actually like learn something. You know, even somebody who is really into fitness and wellness, you still learn things in it, new things, and you know it's very motivational. So I highly recommend getting on uh, Catherine's mailing list so you can get her newsletter and. Um, what if somebody wants to get like a customized workout plan with you? Is there a way to do that? We are. We're offering one special for your fans and followers, Miss Erin Cox. And what we can do is we are offering a, a personal customized fitness program. So a fitness prescription customized to fit your goals and your needs. And it'll consist of a Skype or a phone consult, follow it up with two phone consults just to make sure things are going well, and we'll provide you with five different exercise routines. It's a retail value of $300, and we're providing it for all of your followers for only $89, so take advantage. Wow, definitely take advantage of that. That is awesome. So basically, you'll kind of customize it based on the person's goals and what, they, what they're looking to accomplish with their body. Yes if they want to get toned, if they want to lose body fat, if they want to train for a half marathon, whatever whatever their goal is, we'll customize it for them. Awesome. Well, thank you. This has been so awesome, so informational, and uh, I just have enjoyed this so thoroughly. Thank you very much, Catherine. Well, thank you for having me on your show, Erin. Love you too. All right. Bye. Bye.